you waste your time. My purse is empty and my life can be of no value to you. Monsieur Hugo is mistaken. It's his life we came for. And one of you will have to pay for it. Monsieur Hugo should have reserved such eloquence for his drama and poetry and left politics to others. As for me, I'm willing to risk my life. Take him. Monte Cristo, and your two stalwart friends, Carlo and Jacopo. My thanks. Gentlemen, Monsieur Hugo, what happened? Three assassins tried to attack me. They were wearing Apache clothing. They went down that alley. We'll try and get them. Yours was a well-timed entrance, my friends. these yours? No, no, you're making a mistake. Here's the mistake, assassin. It was yours, not ours. No, no, I was only looking for my daughter. Bring him along, bring him along. No, no, no. Your study keeps late hours, Victor. Between my writings and my duties in the National Assembly, it must. The two Victor Hugo, the literary genius and the politician. Tonight's business appears to concern the political Hugo. The assassin said it was because of politics. But what I have said or done to inspire my death, I can't imagine. Perhaps it's something you were about to do or say. And someone is trying to prevent it. But what could I have possibly been going to do that... Now I wonder. It's addressed to me as deputy of the National Assembly, but mysteriously slipped under my door by an unseen messenger. Read that, Edmond. It's from the town of Bourget. Mr. Victor Hugo, deputy of the National Assembly. If you, whose voice is often raised against corruption in office, would be interested in exposing a foul and wicked traffic in galley slaves... Galley slaves? Sounds incredible, doesn't it? I am ready to clear my conscience and make a full disclosure but it must be done in secrecy. You are the only man I can trust. My life is at stake. Gerard, chief of Bourget police. Who knows you received this? Oh, a friend or two in the assembly, and of course I mentioned it to Baron Chablon. Chablon? Director of prisons. Oh, yes, of course. He wants to go into the matter with me tomorrow. Come in, Sergeant. I see you caught one of them. In the act of discarding his Apache disguise, Monsieur Hugo. Please, Monsieur. I had no hand in it, believe me. Do you recognize him, Monsieur? Monsieur, I beg of you. This means my death by the guillotine. The death penalty for tonight's attack? It is automatic, Monsieur. He's an ex-convict. Five years in the galleys. In the galleys? Yes, Monsieur. Five years for stealing a loaf of bread. And persecuted by the police ever since. You take us for fools, pleading that worn-out nonsense. Was it police persecution that made you wear this? And this? And attack me with a dagger? I never saw those things before, monsieur. They were lying at his feet when we seized him. One moment, gentlemen. Well, what did he do with the dagger? There was no dagger. So there was no dagger. What of it? He could be the man with the garret? A bit of string easily disposed of? You're jumping to conclusions, Victor. Innocent men have been condemned before. That I very much doubt. What were you doing in that alley? Tell Monsieur Hugo about your imaginary visit to your imaginary daughter. It's true, Monsieur. 
I climbed into the yard of the residence with the hope that my daughter might still be employed there as a maid. I, I hoped to awaken her without alarming the household. After midnight? I was starving, monsieur, and without a lodging. We questioned the household. They had never heard of this imaginary daughter. That would seem conclusive enough. Take him away. I'll prefer charges tomorrow. Uh, just a moment. I would like to have the name of the prisoner. Marius Cambry, age 49. No permanent address. Does it show where he was sentenced to the galleys? Yes, monsieur. By Magistrate Polino at Bourget. Bourget? Take him away. Good night, gentlemen. Five years in the galleys for stealing a loaf of bread. Extreme, I admit. But after all, he was guilty, and he's doubtless guilty tonight. So my main contention remains unchallenged. Innocent men don't find themselves in such predicaments, Edmond. I would like to challenge that from my past, but not tonight. There is too much to do, and there is no time to waste. Tonight? What are you going to do at this hour? I'm going to try to find out if that man is innocent. He said he was searching for his daughter in that street. Carlo, see what you can find out. I will, Edmond. My sentimental friend, that man is guilty. And I have no sympathy for hardened criminals. And until you do, Victor, you'll keep on writing this fashionable drivel. Think it over, my friend. Good night. My friend, while you are trying to prove this convict's innocence, I am going to find out who hired him to assassinate me. Good luck to both of us. I hated to disturb you, Chablon, but as director of prisons, I know you would be interested in tonight's attempt on my life and see its probable connection with that letter from Bourget. Interested is hardly the word, Victor. I'm profoundly shocked. The appeal of this police chief, Girard, must be investigated immediately. I propose to bring the matter before the assembly tomorrow, without publicizing the chief's name, of course. Uh, no, Victor. Why give these conspirators warning? I have a much better plan. You must answer Girard's appeal in person. You're right, Baron. I'll ride down to Berger in the morning. That might be too late. I think I have the answer. De Grissac, will you join us, please? The Chief Inspector of Prisons, de Grissac, is visiting me. He's an expert at this kind of thing. Let's put it in his hands. Excellency? Come in, come in, de Grissac. Grissac, I want you to meet my friend, Victor Hugo. A pleasure, monsieur. Mutual, I'm sure. We have an interesting adventure to arrange. The source, perhaps, of a new and sensational Victor Hugo drama. Read this. You said you spent five years as prisoner in the galleys. Yes, monsieur. Five years. Chained to the oars in sun and rain. At night, thrown into the filthy hole except those selected for transfer. Transfer? Yes, monsieur. Supposedly to our new colony in Algiers. Actually, they were sold into slavery. What do you mean, Cambrai? It's true, monsieur. The young and the strong were taken away in ships by the Barbary pirates in exchange for gold. A prey to whom? I don't know. But it's the truth. Every galley slave will swear to it. But would they believe us? Infamous. Does the village of Bourget have any connection with all this? I don't know. Except it is now the departure point for all criminals sentenced to Devil's Island, the Chateau d'If, and the galleys. Cambrai, do you have the courage to tell your story in a high court? Why not, monsieur? I'm going to be put to death anyway. Have heart, my friend. We'll do everything we can about that. Well, gentlemen, do you think anyone would recognize me now? Never. Anyway, not as the famous Victor Hugo in that disguise. Don't you agree, de Grisac? Yes, indeed, Excellency. He'll do. For your protection, de Grisac will precede you to Bourget. 
Should anything go wrong from your interview with the police chief, he'll come to your aid instantly. Splendid. Then I'm off to Berger. How my friends in the Comédie Francaise would enjoy this transformation. Enter Gaston LaRue, exit Victor Hugo. Exit Victor Hugo. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> I don't know why Cambrai was first sent to the galleys. If I'm any judge of character, he's an honest man. Thank you, Jacopo. No, Jacopo. No man is born evil. Somewhere along the line of march, he stumbles and gets out of step with humanity. Ah, Carlo. Ah, food. I deserve it after last night's work. Uh, then you did find out something about Cambrai's daughter. She told the truth. His daughter worked at a nearby home up to a year ago. Good work. It's still no proof of Cambrai's innocence. Well, at least it does prove that Cambrai told the truth about his daughter. As for the rest of the story, we must try to Bourget to find the answers. Fresh horses, Jacopo. We are paying a visit to Chief Gerard of the Bourget police. After I've finished. Captain Gerard, Sergeant. And your name? My name is LaRue. I wish to have my paper certified by the captain here. You'll find the captain inside, in his office. Thank you, Sergeant. Will I find Captain Gerard in this building? What business do you have with the captain, monsieur? Oh, it is a personal matter. Then I'm afraid, monsieur, it's too late. Captain Gerard is dead. May I ask how he met his death? By a murderer's knife. Then my business must be presented to the magistrate of the court here. I will have to wait too, monsieur. Why? His honor is engaged in a special session of the court. The murderer of Captain Gerard is on trial for his life. Nonsense. There can be no defense for what you have done, prisoner LaRue. It's an infamous crime. Captain Gerard murdered, brutally slain by this very knife. What have you to say about this in your own defense, LaRue? Your Honor, this is all a ridiculous mistake. You call murder ridiculous, sir? No, but the thought that I killed the captain certainly is. He was lying there dead when I entered the office. Then how did this knife happen to be in your hand? I took it because I thought I'd seen it before. And I have. It's the blade of a would-be assassin that attacked me in Paris just the other night. Uh, you're a Parisian? Of course I am. This states that you are Gaston Alfredo Larue, an ex-convict. That's nonsense. It was merely a guise I was assuming. My name is not Larue. I am Victor Hugo. Hugo? The author, the playwright? Yes. And I demand you release me. Did I hear the word demand? This is a tribunal of justice, and you are merely a suppliant here. Suppliant? I? Arrested upon a false charge? A man with my reputation? My position in society? And you call me a suppliant? Prisoner LaRue, have you prepared your conscience to hear, in proper humility, the sentence which is now about to be imposed upon you? But surely I have the right to trial before I'm sentenced. Uh, 
You have already been tried and convicted, LaRue. Tried? Convicted? Upon what grounds? On the evidence. LaRue, I ask you once again, have you anything to say? I have plenty to say. This is no court of justice. This is a star chamber presided over by a butcher. A charnel house which reeks with injustice. With a scorn for liberty. Ignoring the most basic rights for humanity and man. Enough! This is a court of law. Not a debating society for convicted murderers. Gaston Alfredo LaRue, having been found guilty of murder, tried and convicted under due process of law, I order that you be taken at once to the galleys at Toulon. There, under the law of France, to spend the rest of your natural life. The galleys? Take him away. One moment, please, Your Honor. Good morning. And who are you, sir, who dares to interrupt the dignity of this magistrate's court? The prisoner seems to know my name, although I can't say I recognize him. I am the Count of Monte Cristo at your service. Monsieur Lacan, I still demand an explanation of your conduct in this court. Well, I understand that the prisoner, whom you call Leroux, claims the identity of a very good friend of mine, Monsieur Victor Hugo. Claiming the identity of Edmond. And if he is, sir, can you supply us with an identification? Well, I must admit that there is a slight resemblance to my friend, but I can't say definitely it's he. For two reasons. What is this nonsense, Edmond? What are you trying to do? First, Victor Hugo is incapable of murder. Second, he always maintained that no innocent Frenchman could ever find himself in the position of the prisoner. An innocent man convicted for a crime he did not commit. Now, if you finish, sir. Not quite, Your Honor. I wish to express my full opinion of this court. It is a contemptible caricature of a court of justice. And I cannot allow it to silence an innocent man. Here, Victor. Stand fast. Seize them. Back. Get back. Get back. Both of you. Horses out of sight and keep watch. But Edmond, the gendarmes are still following us. We've traveled only a few kilometers from Bourget. Uh, we won't let a few gendarmes in a few kilometers of road worry us now, my friend. Well, my friend, what do you think of justice as dispensed in the courts of France? I can't believe it, Edmond. Surely these can't be the general conditions in the courts of France. No, fortunately, no. But you can see now what can happen to an innocent man. I can indeed, Edmond. What about Cambrai? Is he innocent too? I'm convinced that he is. He also was sentenced by our mercenary friend, Magistrate Polino. What do you mean, mercenary? What is usually the capital punishment in France for a convicted murderer? Why, death, of course. Hanging, the guillotine. But Paulino sentenced you to the galleys at Toulon. I wonder how much of a price you would bring at the slave market. Then you think Paulino is trafficking in slaves? Why not? It would mean great wealth for Paulino and the men behind him, if the traffic were great enough. And who can he be? The same men who sent you down here in disguise and who said that the Grisac would protect you. Baron Chablon? What better men than the director of prisons? He was in a position to arrange that all young, able-bodied prisoners shipped through Bourget be sentenced to those galleys as slave fodder. How can we prove it, Edmond? Edmond, the gendarmes are setting up roadblocks. Where? 
There, below. Send out those men. Cover every road. The proof may be moving in our direction. Out of sight, all of you. If you please. If Monte Cristo gets back to Paris, it will mean our heads. The Minister of Justice will be only too eager to hear his report. They can't escape. Every road north is blocked. What do you think, de Grisac? They're trapped, Excellency. And our men will close in on them in the morning. Besides, Chevron, as a magistrate, I can assure you that they have not one shred of legal evidence against us. As a magistrate, you should know that legal evidence is sometimes meaningless. They must be taken and destroyed without a trace. The famous lime pits of Bourget will take good care of that, Excellency. No. Thank you. We saw your coach outside, Baron, so we thought we'd come in for a little chat. As deputy of the National Assembly, I arrest you, Baron Chablon. You, Magistrate Palano, and you, Monsieur de Grisac, in the name of the King. You haven't a scrap of evidence against us. Now, it gives me great pleasure to disillusion you, Baron. Jacopo? Sergeant Tyrell has decided to throw himself upon the mercy of His Majesty the King. As token of his sincerity, he has led us to the magistrate's file. There is enough evidence in here to guillotine every one of you, or at least to send you to the galleys. Last act curtain, gentlemen. Oh, not yet, Victor. Exit first. <laughs> Please, gentlemen. Count, Monsieur Victor, all of you. How can I tell you how grateful I am? I'm glad you're a free man, Cambrai. And I apologize deeply for my attitude the other night. There is no need, Monsieur. I am too happy a man to bear any grudges. We have located Monsieur Cambrai's daughter. And the two of them are going to take care of my little farm near Rouen. Why, that's splendid, Edmond. But there should be something that I can do to repay him for... Yes! Of course there is, Monsieur Cambray. I'm going to make you immortal. Immortal? Yes. The hero of a novel. The story of a man who went to the galleys for stealing a loaf of bread. Then was hounded all his life by the police. Yes. Yes, that's it. Les Miserables by Victor Hugo.